Okay, now in working through the solutions to certain quadratic equations, we've seen a variety of things happening, right? We've seen that we could have two different real roots. We have saw that sometimes we can actually just have one real root. And sometimes we actually have no real roots, but instead two complex roots. So this raises an interesting question. How can you tell, just by looking at the quadratic equation, which situation we're going to be in? Namely, are we going to have two different real roots? Are we going to have just one real root? Or are we going to have two imaginary or two complex roots? Those three different possibilities. And it turns out that information is encoded in the coefficients of the equation. And let me show you how you can think about it. In fact, let's put up the quadratic formula again. And now, where would we determine this thing? Well, take a look at the quadratic formula. And what do you see? You see that we have a negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now, where do the two solutions come from? The two solutions come from the plus or minus part, that square root thing. So we can immediately see that if there's plus or minus and the thing that follows the square root is 0, then in fact there's only going to be one solution. Right? So in fact, we can see that if that square root thing over there is 0, then we have only one solution. What if we have, how do we determine if it's real or complex? Well, again, it's the square root that's going to give us the answer. Do you see why? Because if that square root, the thing inside the square root is positive, then we're going to have two different real solutions. But if that thing under the square root is negative, then in fact we're going to have two complex solutions. So all we have to do is look at the thing under the, under the radical. And in fact, that has a name because it's so important. It's called the discriminant. So the discriminant, which sometimes people denote as d, is just the thing under the radical, which is b squared minus 4ac. And now, just thinking about it, this is something you should definitely not memorize. But just thinking about it, if this number is positive, then what do we have? We have two different real solutions. Then two real solutions. If d actually equals 0, then only one solution. And, and, and in fact, what is the one solution? You can see it. Look over there and put it as 0 under the square root. What is it? It's negative b over 2a. That's what you see there. So in fact, I'll tell you exactly what the solution is. It equals negative b over 2a. Just as a little side comment, there's one solution I can tell you exactly what it is. No need to factor anything. It's just negative b over 2a. That's it. And what if d were to be a negative number? If d is negative, then we have two complex solutions. So in fact, the discriminant has the power to tell us what situation we're in. All you have to do is look at the coefficients and make this thing up b squared minus 4ac. Again, don't memorize it. Just think about it, because it makes a lot of sense. Let's try some examples together. I'm going to use my example pen. Let's try 2x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. And now the question is, don't solve it. Don't actually solve it. Just tell me what kind of solutions are we going to have. Two different real solutions, one real solution, or two complex solutions. Well, all we have to do is compute the discriminant. And the discriminant is, remember, b squared minus 4ac. So it's b squared minus 5 squared, which is 25, minus 4 times ac. So that's going to be 4 times, um, well, I guess 14. And what does that equal? Well, actually, I don't even care what it equals. All I care about is if it's positive, negative, or 0. But let me see if I can actually compute this for you. Well, this is going to be what? This is going to end in a 6. And if I carry the 1, this should be a 56. OK? And so uh, what is this? Well, we can figure this out, I guess, too, if we have to. <laughs> Help us. I think this would be 30 minus 31. Or maybe not. Let's see. OK, I wish I could do arithmetic a lot better. Oh, no, no, it should be uh, 29, I think, or 56, 
or something, or positive 56. Let's see. I think that I'm making some major mistakes here. Let's go back and see if I'm computing the discriminant correctly or not. So let's see. b squared minus 4 times ac. But what is c? Where were you when I needed you? c is negative 7. Negative 7. Not positive 7, but negative 7. You know, I thought we're working together as a team here. If you're not going to help me, then I can't help you. OK. No, I didn't mean to yell, but all right. All right, so this is actually minus 14. So really, this is minus, minus 14, minus 14. This wasn't my mistake. This is like one of those web clog up things. You know when the web screws up, it sort of freezes. Ding, 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 ding. No, actually, that was me. OK, all right, I'm sorry about that. So minus 14, but it's good that you can see these mistakes. Minus 14. So the minus times the minus makes it a plus, which means now I get to add. And if I add those two numbers, now that I can do reasonably successfully, 5, 6, 7, this is going to be 81. 81. OK. Well, the only thing I care about is its sign. Well, that's positive. And so what that means is what? This is going to have two, two, that's right, two different real solutions. Now, I wasn't asked to find them. All I want to know is what kind are there. So it turns out there's two real solutions to this problem. OK? Great. All right, let's try another one really fast. Let's, in fact, let's throw this one away. Put it over there. It's the whiteboard. OK, uh, how about this one? 3x squared minus 2x plus 10 equals 0. OK, all I want to know is what kind of solutions are there going to be. So let's compute the discriminant. So what would it be? Negative b, well, that's not negative b. That's just part of the formula. What I want to look at is the discriminant. So that's going to be b squared minus 4ac. b squared is going to be minus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times ac. Well, a is 3, and c is 10, so ac is 30. So what does this equal? So d equals 4 minus 120 which equals minus 116. And that's negative. So that means I'm going to have two distinct solutions. However, they're complex solutions. They're imaginary solutions. OK? Let's try one last one together. I bet you can't guess what the answer is going to be now. Let's see. Let's see. OK, don't be so smart. So x squared minus 20x plus 100 equals 0. Let's see what the discriminant would be here. It would be what? Well, it would be, let's see, square root of b squared minus 4ac. So it's b squared minus 4ac. So it would be this thing squared, which would be 400, minus 4 times ac. So that's 4 times 100. And yes, your guess is probably correct. 400 minus 400 is 0. So this is only going to have one solution. And in fact, you can factor this pretty easily and see that this is actually a perfect square. So there's only going to be one solution to this. So the discriminant, it's really great. The thing under the radical actually tells you how many solutions you're going to have and what flavor they're going to be. So really important an object down there. And I hope you enjoy it. And by the way, don't tell your friends about that mistake I made before because, you know, that's just between us, OK? I'm sorry I yelled at you.